The most exciting new feature in the Vancouver release of the Now platform is Now Assist, which is ServiceNow's generative AI capability. And one type of content that you can generate is scripts, including scripts for your APIs. And this makes it even easier and quicker to create your own custom APIs. Earlier this year, I published a series to YouTube on creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow, which by the way, is now available on Now Learning. That is, how can we permit external applications and give them access to data inside the Now platform? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Now Assist to create the script that you need for that part of the API. Now, keep in mind that you'll still need knowledge of JavaScript and of some basic ServiceNow APIs such as Glide Record, or even better, Glide Record Secure, and the various REST API classes. And you'll still need to have your code peer reviewed before publishing. Like all generative AI applications, the quality of the content that Now Assist for Code generates is in large part dependent on the quality of the prompts that you give it. The more exact the prompts are, the better the results. For example, a prompt like declare a variable is too general. We need something more specific like save the VIN from the path parameter in a variable called VIN. So before we start creating our script, we need to know what we want to do with it. So let's refresh our memories of the API that we created in that series, specifically the resource to query the vehicles table with a VIN and return specific fields from the record that we find. That is, our API will do the following. One, declare a variable called answer to save the response in. Two, obtain the VIN parameter specified in the path and save it as another variable. Three, use this VIN to query the vehicles table. And four, return certain fields from the record that we find. And with this structure in mind, we can go ahead and create our API. So let's revisit the first version of our get vehicle resource that we created in part seven of the scripted rest API series. We can see here we declared a variable answer. So we're actually going to save the response in that variable at the end. Uh, we then obtained the VIN, the vehicle identification number from the path parameter. So when you call this web service, we expect that a VIN will be provided. And if not, we throw an error. And then we use that VIN to query the vehicles table. And if we don't find a record there, we throw another error and we then return the object if a vehicle is in fact found. Okay, and we return that object uh, in JSON format. Okay, so we've actually got the advantage here in that this code is commented. Okay, so we can use these comments as the basis for our prompts for now assist for code. So if I go ahead here, I'm just going to copy the very first comment head, declare empty array for answer. Okay, and then we'll go to our scripted REST service here. I've already set one up here. It's in a separate application scope. It's nice and clean, and I haven't done anything else to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new resource here. We'll give it a name again, get vehicle, and we'll specify the path, slash vehicle, slash, and then the VIN as the path parameter. And then in our scripting box here, we'll save it first. And then in our script box there, I'm just going to paste that comment that we just copied, declare empty array for answer. That's it, okay? And then hit command and enter in a Mac to generate the code. And then once we do that, we actually get quite a bit more than what we expected. So because this scripting box is in a scripted REST resource record, the system kind of knows what to expect and what to output. So we haven't gotten just the uh, variable here. We've actually got more or less the beginning and the middle and the end of the entire API itself. Okay, only for the fact that the, the table here uh, is querying some random table in the platform and not the table that we want to be queried. But that's okay. So we can actually just press tab here and make some corrections. We can actually go ahead and delete most of this. So we actually only need the, the first line here, that uh, variable. And I'll just correct the, the spelling there so it's singular also in the comment there. Okay, we'll save that once more. 
So we'll come back to our original script here and we'll just go to the second comment and copy that. And I'm just going to paste that straight in. Okay, get the VIN from the path parameter and generate a 404 if one is not provided. Okay, command and enter. And then we get a response back. Okay, so we get the path parameter in those first few lines of code. And if one is not specified, we generate an error message. We actually don't set the status to be 404. Uh, that's missing here from our original script. Uh, but that's okay. We can also add that later if we want to. Um, but then it goes on again and kind of thinks, okay, well, I know that you want to generate a API resource here, so we'll just go ahead and um, pick the vehicle table here. It's actually picked the wrong one. There is actually a vehicle table in the CMDB that has been used instead. Uh, but that's okay uh, because if we look at the rest here, it's, again, pretty much what we need. So I'm going to tab that so that we get the response in the script box itself. And just like before, just remove the lines of code that we don't need. So I'm only restricting myself to those first few lines where we get the path parameter. Okay, and I'll save that again. All right, so let's go back now to our original script and we'll copy the third line or the third comment rather in our script. Okay, we'll come back and we'll paste that. Now, if you recall in the um, previous code that was generated, the system did actually, or the code uh, that was spat out did actually query the vehicle table, only the wrong vehicle table. So I'm gonna replace uh, the name vehicle with the actual name of the table itself. So we're more specific here, so we really can't go wrong then. It's not gonna query any other table except this one. <laughs> okay. And then again, command enter, generate that code. So let's have a look. We query the vehicle table. It's actually added a, a little bit of extra comment there to our original one. That's okay. It's querying the vehicle table using the VIN. If no records are found, we return a message to the user. And then we build an object using well, what it thinks are fields that we want in that object. And actually, that looks pretty good. And then we push the response out to uh, the body, and that's it. All right. Okay, so we need to make a few changes here, a few corrections. But actually, that's looking pretty good right now. We only need to make a few corrections. So let's do that. Let's go down to the fields first of all. Now, in the original script, if you have a look at it, we... Return the, the VIN, the make, the model, and the year. So we've got the color on the license plate, which actually are not fields in our table, so we'll need to remove those. So let's do that. And if we come down to the, the bottom here, line 36, you can see it's kind of half finished uh, aligned there. I think sometimes I've come across this before where the response that you get back from the now assist for code uh, Gen AI uh, engine uh, doesn't actually complete. I'm not sure if there's a limit to how much code can be returned in any one uh, request. But anyway, it's kind of cut off here, but that doesn't matter because in line 38, we've actually got the end of our script. So we can just go ahead and delete line 36. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. It is finished. Now, in reality, I would make a few changes, a few improvements here, but this is going to work right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and save it and test it. So I'm going to come over here to Postman. I've already got it set up for the instance that I'm querying and with the, the user that I want to use uh, to authenticate. Uh, so I'll send the request and bang, we get the response back. Okay, using that API. And that API was more or less created using our generative AI capabilities in the platform. Fantastic. So there you have it, the script, the code that you need for your Get Vehicle API resource. And with this knowledge and a little bit of trial and error, you can apply these same principles to generate your other API resources as well. Keep in mind, as we've already noted, you still need to know the fundamentals of how scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow work and what logic you need to put in your scripts. 
You also need basic knowledge of JavaScript and some ServiceNow APIs so that you're able to review the generated content. But we can now generate a script for our API a lot quicker than before and without any typos or syntax errors. And remember, this is just the beginning. It's going to be very interesting to revisit and revise this video in a few years' time. So thanks for watching.